Cool. All right. Hello, everyone. This is Mike Selecki coming to you with a, another Practicing with Selecki segment. Um, in case you didn't gather, the focus of today is major scales. So this is a sheet that I am currently putting on the website, so I'll send links out to everybody. <clears throat> this is a fantastic thing to practice if you are a little bit ahead of what we're doing in the books or if you wanna keep challenging yourself, this is an absolutely wonderful thing to do. Um, when, if you are one of those people that's interested in pursuing music in college or even in a lot of groups after high school, the first thing they make you do is memorize all of your scales. These are just the major scales and we will come back to the minor scales in the future. Um, first, I just wanted to kind of give a little explanation of what in the world a scale is, why should we care about it, and why do we spend so much time making them sound good and getting them under our fingers. So in order to explain what in the world a scale is, we have to go way back to the beginning with a keyboard. This is a piano keyboard, of course. Um, it has all of these different notes on it, some are white, some are black. The white notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, it repeats again. Repeat over and over and over 88 times because there are 88 keys on a piano. Uh, some electric pianos have less and some um, of those little digital ones just for DJing and making synthetic music and all that stuff have a lot less. But um, ideally, a piano has 88 keys. And we always try to start with what we call middle C. So that is this puppy right here. This is on the left of the group of two black keys. So you'll notice that the black keys on top are grouped into groups of three and groups of two. That is very, very helpful to remember. So if you're trying to find your C, it's always to the bottom left of the group of two black keys. So again, you go C and you just keep walking down the alphabet, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So that is very, very rudimentary stuff. Um, hopefully stuff we already know. If not, that's totally fine. That's why we're here. We're all here to remember stuff and to learn together. <clears throat> this next part, I'm gonna kind of blast through because we've got a lot more stuff to cover. These black keys actually have more than one name. Some of the white keys have more than one name, but that's something that we'll come back to later. Uh, the black keys are C sharp, because that is one key, one half step to the right of C. Let me draw a little C so we don't forget that that's C. Beautiful. So one half st step to the right is C sharp. And another half step is gonna be D. Another half step is D sharp. And then E, and then F. F sharp, because it's one note higher, one half step higher. G. G sharp, A, B sharp, sorry, A sharp, B, and then C. Kind of a basic rundown if we're going from low to high. Whenever we're going from low to high, <clears throat> a lot of times we use sharps, even in seemingly strange places like D sharp instead of the E flat that we're normally used to, and A sharp instead of the B flat that we're normally used to. That's just a trend. Um, when people are writing music to kind of help them organize their thoughts. If we start on this C right here and we move down, we have a B, we've got a B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, F, E, E flat, D, D flat, and then back down to C again. Now, if you're wondering how can the same note have two different names, there is a very fancy musical term for that. That is called enharmonics. So enharmonics are different names for notes that sound exactly the same, are played exactly the same on our band instruments, and are played exactly the same on our keyboards right here. This is C sharp, same as D flat. This is D sharp, same as E flat. F sharp, same as G flat. 
A sharp, um, sorry, G sharp, same as A flat. A sharp, same as B flat. And then we come back up to C. Technically, we can keep going on this enharmonic strain for a very long time. We can do, we can call this B sharp because it's a half step, AKA one key to the right um, higher. So B sharp is technically C. Remember that in the future. E sharp is technically F. And those are some really important things uh, to remember. <clears throat> Just like C flat is technically B because we would go one half step, AKA one key to the left if we wanna lower our note. So sharps take us one key to the right. And that this is where it gets a little bit complicated because um, we use the terms flat and sharp to mean a few different things. I'm gonna go with my flat over here, with my beautiful arrows. Um, <clears throat> We use the terms flat and sharp to mean a few different things. When we're tuning our instrument and our note is too high, we say that, our, we, say that we are a little bit sharp as a state of being. If our note is too low when we're tuning our instrument, we say that we are flat. To remedy those in the order I just said them, if you are too sharp, you're too high, you need your note to be lower. Bigger instruments are lower, so you're going to make your instrument bigger by pulling a part of your instrument out. If it's a brass instrument, they have tuning slides or slides on different valves. Um, if it is a flute, you're gonna pull the head joint in and out. If it's a clarinet, you're gonna either pull the barrel in and out or the middle joint. <clears throat> either way, you're gonna make your instrument bigger so that it gets lower. If you are flat, you notice too low, you're gonna wanna make your instrument smaller because smaller instruments are higher, they play higher notes. So you're going to want to push that same thing back in. Tuning slide or head joint or barrel or middle joint. <clears throat> um, if it's a saxophone of any variety, alto, tenor, or berry, you're going to move the mouthpiece on the cork. So that's all really super easy stuff that we already know. I'm going to clear this. Beautiful. And then move on to the secret to life, the universe, and everything, at least from a musical perspective. It's not the number 42, it is the circle of fits. Now, some of you have already seen this before. I've talked about it with some of you. <clears throat> this is just a really quick review. And believe me, this is all coming back to what to do with all these major scales. So nobody panic, there is a method to the madness, I promise. This is your circle of fits, so-called, because if you go clockwise, let's get a little arrow going. If you go clockwise, AKA the same direction that the hands of a clock move, all of these notes are five notes apart. Five notes on the keyboard. If I'm going from C to G, whenever we talk about um, notes being apart, we always count the first note that we're starting on. So if I'm playing a C, I include that. So that's one, D, E, F, G. C, D, E, F, G, one, two, three, four, five. And if I'm trying to find my next note, I can either look at this D or I can figure it out myself. I start on G and play five notes up. Woo. One, two, three, four, five. I land on the D. Another thing to note about this is depending on which way you're looking at it, it actually has two different names if you wanna get really fancy. When you go counterclockwise, AKA the opposite direction that the hands of a clock go, it's actually the circle of fourths because each note is four notes apart. Let me change color real quick and put a little five here. Beautiful. So if I'm going from C right here in the middle and I wanna find my next note going counterclockwise, Around, I go up four notes. C, D, E, F. One, two, three, four. Just like that. If I want to find my next one. So that is a really, really important thing to remember with your circle of fits. The next important thing I want to talk about is the order of flats. The order of flats is something that I've talked about a lot in class. 
let me write this. Where am I going to put this? Because I'm going to reference it a lot. Let's put it over here. B E A D G C F. There we go. So that is our order of flats. Now, what I mean by order of flats, <clears throat> when they add flats in your music, when they add flats going from one scale to the next, starting off with C, so you got no sharps and no flats, they follow the order of flats. They add one flat each time. One flat, two flat, three flat, four flat, and then it keeps going on all the way until you get to six or seven flats, believe it or not. Um, coming back to not that page. Come on, technology. There you go, this page. Um, they always add them in the same order. So flats is going bead GCF. If you come up with a cool mnemonic device for that, that would be really helpful. I was just taught the word bead and then GCF. Not very fancy, not very fun. So if you think of something more fun, that is totally cool. And uh, send me an email if you think of something really fun. Um, that is the order of flats. B E A D G C F. Now, since it's flats, they actually have these names with a little flat next to them B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat and then F flat. I told you folks that C flat and F flat will come in handy in the future. This is exactly when they come in handy. Um, if you are a person that's going clockwise around the circle of fits, I'm just now realizing that my color coding is all off because I just did flats and blue and that's sharps. Anyway, they always add sharps in this order. They always add F sharp, then C sharp, G sharp, <clears throat> D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, B sharp. So it's just the reverse of the order of flats. If you can remember the order of flats, you can use that to pretty much decode anything else you need to remember in the world of music. That's why it is the answer to like the universe and everything. <clears throat> so what does this mean for when we are playing scales? Actually, let me clear this stuff off, go to a different part of this. And this I'll put on the um, music website as well if anybody wants some help with it. I don't have this in bass clef. I'll work on finding one of those, but this is treble clef <clears throat> for all of the key signatures. So again, they're adding in the order of flats when they go counterclockwise, aka this way. And then they're adding sharps in the reverse order of flats, so the order of sharps, when they go this way. Um, F, we had just have to remember <clears throat> that the key of F has one flat in it. And then we get to use the order of flats. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, and technically C flat. Now these notes have the parentheses around them because this is when the enharmonics, aka two different names for the same sounding note, come in really, really handy. We have to be able to communicate in both flats and sharps when we get to that part of the circle of fits. So let me move over to the scales and talk about the very first scale. I'm just kind of highlighting those, hopefully that works. All we do is start on C, we go up, to C, and then back down to C. We also do what's called an arpeggio for the last two measures. The first note, third note, fifth note, top note, high C, fifth note, third note, first note, back down again. And let's give it a quick play. Hopefully it sounds a little bit something like that. <clears throat> Fun fact, as, um, as we are growing, when we are first born, AKA the first two years that we are all around on this planet, 
that is actually when we hear music being performed either on the radio, on CDs, people singing to us, uh, lullabies that we get when we're trying to go to sleep. Any music we come encounter with, our brain is absorbing that information and it is making patterns. It's being able to recognize the patterns just like this. They actually do studies with um, toddlers and sometimes babies where they play these scales, but they play one wrong note and they see what a very tiny person does. And sometimes they'll turn their head and get confused. And it is actually super cute, check those out. But we are even younger than the age of two able to tell when these are right and when these are wrong. So when you're practicing these at home, and you play a wrong note, like I'm gonna play something that happens a lot. I'm gonna play a B wrong button. There we go. I'm gonna play a B flat instead of a B natural right here. <clears throat> if you thought to yourself that sounded kind of weird, you are exactly right, and I appreciate you following your instincts. Um, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. Our brain subconsciously knows when we play a wrong note as we're practicing these, so don't ignore what your brain is telling you. Um, so we start off with our key of C, no sharps and no flats, like I just did and talked about for way too long probably. And then we are going around the circle of fourths. We are going counterclockwise. Why? I actually have a theory as to why a lot of band music is in, um, has a lot of flats. If you are a string player, uh, aka a violin player, guitarist, they love sharp keys, so they go around the circle of fifths a lot. But if you're a wind player, aka blow into your instrument, anything we play in band, um, and percussion gets lumped in because it's in band, we love to go to the flat side. <clears throat> My theory, and this might be true, this might totally not be true, is that when we add fingers on our instruments, we lower the pitch. So if I'm playing trumpet and I play a G, I put down one finger, it goes down one note to F. So when we add fingers, our notes get flatted, AKA our notes get lower. If you are playing a guitar or a violin, and you put a finger down, it actually raises the note just a little bit because you're making the string shorter. And shorter things, smaller things are always higher. That's just my theory. That totally might not be true, but I kind of like sharing that with people because it came to me in a dream one night. Um, going back to the scales, doo -doo 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 -doo, already seen all of this. <clears throat> sure enough, it goes to our key of F because we look at this one counterclockwise from C is F so they're adding one flat and that flat is going to be B flat let's check it and see if it's true look at that it is absolutely true for the number four the concert key I will come back to in just a minute I promise um, most of these scales that we are going one number down, aka from three to four, four to five, five to six, yada, yada, yada. They are adding one flat. And then when we get to, which number is it? Uh, there's one number we get to here, which is the same exact thing as the first scale we played. So that's number three. They go back to C and then they go um, clockwise around the circle, aka the circle of fifths, adding a sharp each time. So we're starting with number four. We're adding one flat and that is B flat because we're remembering the order of flats. And I'm messing up notes because I'm folded in half playing this trumpet. I'm playing under the desk so it's not too loud on the video. Um, but yeah, so I apologize for wrong notes. Um, if you are still having a hard time with high notes, this is just a trumpet specific thing. What you can do, and what a lot of people do, is they take this scale and they actually split it in half. One, two, three, four. And then these, they actually 
take down an octave. It's awkward, but it gets the actual pitches, aka specific notes, um, in your brain instead of just focusing on the ability or inability to play high notes. Um, so it adds another one for number five. If we remember the order of, actually, I'm going to write this down so we don't forget again. Uh, yep, B, E, A, D, G, C, F. Beautiful. Keep that bad boy right over here so we don't forget, just as a reference. We already added one B, one B flat. So that's in the right here. Um, so the name of our scale, we're not looking at the concert part. We're just looking at the first note. So that's why this is C major, but concert B flat major. Actually, I'll, uh, I'll get off track and talk about the concert pitch really quick. Um, so if you are playing a C instrument, AKA a flute, a baritone, a trombone, a tuba, a percussion instrument, um, trombone, if I didn't already say trombone, I apologize. Um, those are in the key of C. So when you play a note, when you play a C, a C comes out. If you play a B flat instrument, AKA clarinet of the soprano and bass variety, um, not the alto variety, that's E flat, we'll come back to that later. Um, saxophone of the tenor and soprano variety, believe it or not. Um, trumpet, if I didn't already say that, and treble clef baritone. We don't have anybody that reads baritone and treble clef, so we don't have to worry about it, but they're also technically in the key of B flat. When you play a C, a B flat comes out. So if you are playing along at home, that's why when I played my C scale, you heard a B flat scale. And there are many reasons for why different instruments are in different keys. Oh, let me, let me uh, pause that thought and go back to um, the other instruments. Uh, we have saxophones of the alto and baritone variety. Those are in the key of E flat. We have horns of the F variety. Those are in F, of course. Um, they're called French horns, and I always do this spiel. Um, they're called French horns because they're in the key of F, F horns. They're actually German. They were invented in Germany, so just a fun fact for you. They're not technically French. I assume that's similar to French fries, but I'm not going to make a big statement about that. <laughs> um, so we can also use the circle of fifths or the circle of fourths, depending on which direction you're going to figure out what our concert key is. So if I am a B flat trumpet player, which most of our trumpets are B flat, there are F trumpets, but we're not gonna worry about that today. Um, I play my, uh, let's see, I wanna play the scale in C, so there's no sharps and no flats. I would actually go two keys to the right. So that when I play D, the C scale actually comes out. If I want to play concert key of F, then I would go two to the right and play G. So another really helpful thing to remember the circle of fifths for. Um, let's see, if I am a trumpet player and I wanna play the key of, let's get really weird, G flat, I go two clockwise, boom, boom, and play A flat. Uh, that kind of stuff. If I am a horn player, I can find my key, or sorry, find the concert key by going, let's see, it should be one to the left or one counterclockwise. So if I see a B flat major scale concert key, I am playing in F. Yeah, yep, that's right. So my key is F to find my concert key. I go one to the left or I add a flat. 
Uh, if I am a saxophone of the alto or baritone variety or an alto clarinet player, I am going to take my note of G and find the concert key. So I'm going to go three counterclockwise to B flat. That's why when we play our B flat concert scale in class, horn players play their F scale, uh, trumpet players and tenor sax players and all those B flat people play the C scale and saxophones of the alto and baritone variety play their G scale. There are instruments that are in the key of A and D. We do not worry about those very often because we don't have any of them in concert band right now. Um, <clears throat> so that's just another helpful use for the circle of fifths. Now back to scale land. We had, let's see, we played um, three and four. If I had played five, I'm sorry, I'm gonna do it again. This is my B flat major scale because it starts on B flat and they added two flats, which are B flat and E flat, B flat. Whoop, let me get my pointer on. B flat and E flat. Another way to think about this when you go to the next scale, so if I'm going to six from five, I can think of it as playing exactly the same scale. I can think of it as playing the B flat major scale, only starting on a different note, starting on E flat, and adding one flat. We follow the order of flats to find out what flat that is, B flat, E flat, A flat. So it's the same as B flat, but we're adding one flat and that's gonna be an A flat. If that's one way to think of it, that's totally fine. Um, quick note, play these as slowly as you need to to get it 100% correct. I've been working on these for at least 15 years, so that's why I can blast through them. Um, but if you play them very fast and very wrong, that doesn't do anybody any good. So slow and steady wins the race, I promise. Concert G flat. So that is gonna be my A flat because I go back to my circle of fifths. Come on computer box, get that tab out of here. There it is. Whoop. I go two clockwise to find my key. A flat, just like I talked about before, right? Go back over here, look at that. My concert G flat major scale starts on an A flat. They got to that point by adding another flat. So they have B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat in the key signature. And let me double check that. One, two, three, four flats. There we go. Um, there are a couple of tricks I'd like to share with you as far as picking out what your key is. You can think of it in the order of flats, or there is another trick. You can actually find the last flat. In this case, that is a D flat. You just go one to the left of your last flat. So one back from our last flat is an A flat. This is in the key of A flat. I know that because of that little rule and because I double checked the first note if that makes any sense. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to email me at any time. I love talking about this stuff, so I'm more than happy to answer questions. Um, let us continue, I think. So we got four flats. Yep. Oh, good gravy. I got to edit this a little bit. Uh, five flats. We're in the key of D flat because it starts on D flat. And we have B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat. We have five flats. You can also think of it as playing your A flat major scale, but starting on D flat and adding an F uh, G flat. And then we keep adding and adding and adding until we get to seven flats. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, F flat. That sounds like our E major scale, so we will come back to that later. Um, let's go down Sharpland. 
So we start off with our C major scale, no sharps and no flats. And then we add one sharp. That sharp's gonna be F sharp. We just have to remember that the key with one sharp is G. And then everything besides that, we can use the um, order of sharps to get to. So in the key of G, we have one sharp and that's gonna be F sharp. If we're in the key of D, we add one more sharp. We just go one to the left, and then we add the first two going to the left, F sharp and C sharp. If we're in the key of A, we add F sharp, C sharp, G sharp. If we're in the key of E, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp. B, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp. And it keeps following that pattern around all the way for the entire thing. Another way to find your key is to take your last sharp, and go one half step higher. So this is my last sharp, this is an F sharp. I go one step, one half step above F sharp and I have a G. This is my last sharp in this key. I go one half step higher than C sharp and I get D. Let's try something super complicated. Look at all these. Mm, let's go this one. I have an A sharp there. I go one half step higher than A sharp and I get a B. So that is concert A my B, because it starts on B major. Yeah, so that's a little uh, way to think of it. Another way to think of how they're building these major scales is each of them follows a pattern. And I'm trying to give people a bunch of different ways of thinking about it, because everyone's brain's different. And if you find a way that really works for you that you can really latch on to, um, don't be afraid to run with it. It's all about understanding this stuff. It's all about making music that everyone, including ourselves, can enjoy. So whatever your brain needs to do to get to that point, that is totally fine. Don't be embarrassed. Um, I can build a major scale by using a pattern of half steps and whole steps. Half steps are two notes, two keys on the piano that are touching. They're directly touching, so the C and the C sharp, this B, and this C, because there's no key in between these two. Whoop. Let me use my drawer. There's no key in between these two, so that's a half step. There's no key in between these two, so that's a half step. There's no key in between these two, so that's a half step, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, half step, two keys that are touching on the piano. Let's get rid of that stuff. Whole steps, come on, there we go, uh, whole steps two keys that are kind of next to each other. All you do is skip one. So if I start on my C and I wanna go a whole step up, I go to this D because it's skipping this D sharp, or sorry, C sharp. If I want to start on here on my E and go a whole step up, that is skipping one key. So that lands me on F sharp because I'm skipping F natural. Same process with this one, if I'm on A, and I wanna go one whole step up, that's two half steps. Half step would be here, whole step would be here on B because two halves make a whole, who'd have thought? Um, so yeah, if I didn't explain that right, just let me know, but that is the general idea. When you play major scales, and this is where we get to talk about modes for just a second, but I'm just gonna to briefly touch on it because that's something I'm gonna talk about in future videos. Um, when I play, let's see if I can space this out just right. Okay, when you play a major scale, no, I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna draw it. You go whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And what that looks like is whole. A lot of times when music theorists talk about whole steps, they use W for a whole step. <clears throat> and then I go another whole step. And then I go a half step. H, two keys that are touching, whole, 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 half. And the way I actually remember this is I make a drum beat out of it in my head. I go whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, whole, 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 half. And that's kind of silly, but that's the way it works for me. You just remember, <clears throat> another way of thinking about it is 
it's in pattern it's in groups of twos and threes just like the keyboard up here this is in patterns of twos and threes so it starts off with two whole steps then there's a half step and then three whole steps and then there's a half step that is technically how every major scale is built no matter what you're starting on so if i'm starting on c and i want to play my c major scale I do that same exact process in my head, but that takes forever. Um, but if you're one of those people that this works best for, that's totally fine. Uh, let's see. That is the pattern you use to build a major scale. There are different scales that have different patterns, and I will come back to that in the future. But it's all about the distance between the different notes in our scales. That is what babies and toddlers respond to because they hear it so often when they listen to Western music. And by Western, I mean from uh, Western Europe and the Americas. Uh, classical music, if you play classical music for your little ones, if you hear something rock tune on the radio, that qualifies as Western music because it's using the same language. It's all using patterns of whole steps and half steps to make their scales believe it or not. Um, so the distance between two notes is what our brains have been conditioned over all the years and all the sounds we've ever heard to listen for. So that's another reason that it sounds very bad when we play the wrong note when we're working on scales. Um, if I want to start, let's clear all this out and I'll do one more example and then I'll call it a day for you folks. <clears throat> let's go in blue because I like blue. Let's go in blue because I like blue. There we go. Um, if I want to build a, let's get weird with it. Let's go with one of my favorite scales for no apparent reason, E. This is an E major scale. So I go up a whole step. So I'm skipping the F and going to F sharp. I'm skipping the G and going to G sharp, whole, whole. I'm going directly one key to the right. Now this looks a little crazy but it still follows the same pattern, whole, whole, half, and then I skip one, whole, skip another from B to C sharp, whole, skip another from C sharp to uh, D sharp, whole, and then I go a half step, half. Let me double check that scale. Yeah, I just like the way it feels on trumpet. That's one of the reasons why it's my favorite uh, trumpet scale. Whole, uh, spotlight. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Same exact pattern. There was one thing more I wanted to say about this, but it's not coming into my brain right now. There it is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another reason that they use these whole steps and half steps is because it creates a sense of tension and release. If I played this scale, all of the notes except for the last one, and then stopped, instinctively, you would say to yourself, um, you gonna finish that? Because it's not complete. There's no sense of resolution. And when you talk about classical composers, such as Mozart, and you talk about uh, late classical, early romantic composers, such as Beethoven, and there are like 50 million other composers, um, they write everything in terms of tension and release. When there are notes that want to pull towards another one, there's a lot of tension there. And then when it releases, the release is the tension, you get that, uh, and that sense of it finally being over. That's what's created by going from half steps. And that's the pull that we're feeling. So that's like a fourth or fifth reason why our bodies recognize this scale and why it's so prevalent and why we keep working on it forever. So I will send out these scales on the website, the music website. I'll send links and details on how to get through all those. Um, save these as a bookmark on your computer or phone or something, print them out if you want, 
uh, keep these, cherish these forever and ever. If you are looking for more things to do in music land, uh, learn all these. If you're a high school person that's learned all of them, memorize them. Try them in wacky octaves. Look at this bad boy. We got A major scale going for two octaves. Um, if you want to get really crazy and ambitious with it, that's something you could do. You could add octaves and you can memorize it. Because when you get to college, that is the first thing they do day one. They double check that you have all your scales down. Because everything else we try to work on in music theory, believe it or not, is built off of scales. So I will stop talking because I've been talking for a long time. And I will see you folks next time. Thank you so much for enduring my video. If I didn't answer any questions on major scales, please send me an email. Don't be afraid to hit me up. I love talking about this stuff, so I'd be more than happy to. Um, thank you so much and have a great day.